With Unreal Engine's Cube Grid tool, you can quickly bust out level prototypes without ever leaving the engine, which is amazing. It's, it's great. It's a really powerful tool. But if you are new to the level designing side of game development, you might need a little bit more information before you can understand how to effectively integrate this tool into your development flow. After all, I did, I'm still pretty new to the level designing side of Unreal Engine. So this is a tutorial that I wish I had when I started using this tool a week ago. <laughs> the purpose of this tool is to prototype levels quickly in Unreal Engine. So let's start by defining some vocabulary. Prototype pass is the first pass when designing a level. The goal is to get a very general level laid out using basic geometry like spheres, ramps, and cubes. The purpose is to get basic gameplay areas drafted out in a playable environment. The primary benefit is that you can start testing gameplay within the level and adjusting the size and layout very quickly. In this phase, color coding is often beneficial to help differentiate between objects and areas within the level. It's also worth mentioning that before you start prototyping a level in engine, you'll probably want to draft it out on paper first. Level design is more than just laying out a map and filling it with stuff. It's also planning out moment to moment gameplay. What are some of the story beats that drive the player through the level and where are they happening? What are the major set pieces? I'd venture to say that in most cases, you'll save yourself a lot of time if you just draft it out on paper before you jump into the engine and start making stuff. So my process flow usually starts with outlining story beats in a Google Doc, then drawing a map in Canva, then prototyping that level in engine. But that's a video for another day. So now that you've got some context and background information, let's take a look at the cube grid itself. All right, so my goal in this video is to give you enough information to get you started using the tool. So we're just gonna need an empty level with some lighting. I created the, I created a project with the default third person template. I'm just gonna come into the outliner. This is the default level. And select everything that's not lighting. Go ahead and delete it. folders all right so now we've got an empty level with lighting in the top left hand corner of the screen you'll see a box that says selection mode you want to hit that button and change it to modeling uh, the keyboard shortcut for that is shift 5 if you need to do that quickly after you've changed it over to modeling mode you'll see uh, two windows a toolbar window and a modeling window underneath the toolbar window You want to go to poly model and select the cube grid button And when you hit that button, you'll see a grid in the viewport this window to the left of the viewport just shows all the tools that you can use to um, Adjust this grid as you build out your level So some of the options just to briefly go over them are adjusting the grids origin or uh, rotating the orientation of the grid so you don't just have to build at 90 degree angles you can build at whatever angles you want if you hit the show gizmo button it gives you this gizmo that allows you to adjust the grids location and orientation by dragging in the viewport i'm going to leave everything to the default and i'm just going to go over uh, these action buttons so like i said earlier the goal of this tool is to allow you to build out levels layer by layer. So if you highlight a portion of this grid, let's just start with pull. Pull allows you to pull a layer of cubes up out of the grid. So hit pull, you'll see we have a layer of cubes where we had highlighted the grid. If you hit the button again, it gets higher. Uh, just keep stacking them on top. The keyboard shortcut for this is the E key. And push is the next button. Push does the opposite. Push removes the highlighted portion from the grid. And the keyboard short butt for push is Q. And the cool thing about this is like I said, it works wherever there's a surface, it works. So if I wanted this to just be a square with a hole in it for some reason, 
I could highlight this face of the grid and hit Q and push a hole through. I can hit E and bring that hole back through. And yeah, it, it works the way that you'd expect it to work. These other two buttons, slide back and slide forward, are invoked using Shift E or Shift Q. This allow you to move the grid around, move the highlighted portion of the grid around without actually um, placing any cubes or removing any cubes. So if you wanted to place the platform next to this, I could slide it forward, then hit E and continue to build out this way. Hit Q to remove. Now the other cool tool is corner mode. Corner mode allows you to um, pull out corners to create uh, unique shapes, unique objects like ramps. So if I highlight a corner and hit E, it pulls that corner out as far as I want it to go. If I highlight another, if I hit Q, it'll push it back in. If I select another corner of the grid and hit E, and build it out and turn it into a ramp. And you can highlight or remove corners as you see fit. I'm just gonna leave it as a lamp, as a ramp. And the last uh, button, the last action on here is the flip button. The flip button just flips the orientation of the selected portion of the grid. So if I hit flip, which can also be done using the T key, um, and I hit E, it'll build going down and Q will push going up. So that is the basics. That's the fundamentals. That should be enough to get you started using this tool. That's the basics. Uh, those are the fundamentals of using this tool. This should be enough to get you started with this tool. If you have any specific questions about things that I didn't cover, I'm going to point you to video by this person who is much more knowledgeable and does an excellent job breaking down every single part of this tool and then some their video should be linked somewhere on the screen right now now i'm going to quickly go ahead and like make this look like a little bit more of a level I'm gonna go ahead and quickly turn this into a level, prototype of a level. A few moments later. As I stated earlier, you may want to come back through and add some color to differentiate between different parts of the level. One awesome thing you can do with this tool, well, one awesome thing that this tool does is it creates static meshes. And since they're static meshes, you can apply materials to the surface now as you use the cube grid it does give you the option through this materials section to set a material and build cubes with that but let's just say you forgot and in hindsight you need to add some uh, coloration to the level that you've created you can use the uh, material editor tool so with your static mesh object selected in this window uh, underneath the attributes section you'll see matte ed material editor after you select this tool you'll see that the surface of your static mesh has been broken down into a bunch of triangles that's because all static meshes whether created in unreal engine or imported in unreal engine um, get broken down into triangular models and you also see this circle now this circle is your brush in this modeling window over here, you can adjust the size of the brush. I'm going to start with 0 0.02, make it smaller so I can be a little more precise. But all you got to do is highlight various surfaces that you want to turn into a particular color. And you'll see this materials panel over here. It contains an array of materials. Now, none should be already in the array by default because all of the surfaces for the static mesh that you've created thus far should be should not have a static mesh so far. So if you hit the plus button, you'll see a new index pop up and you can add 
a static uh you can select the material from the list these are just the defaults that are in the engine let's just go with the solid blue at first and then an active material you're going to want to make sure you have uh the one you want to apply to this service selected so i want the solid blue to be applied to that surface then under material edits there's a button that says assign active material you hit that and the surface turns into whatever material that you've um, that you've selected. So I'm going to go ahead and do this whole box that I have here. I'm gonna make it blue. And like I said, the purpose of doing this is just to differentiate between certain parts of this level that you created so um in my example blue might signify a particular type of material or a particular action that has to be done in this area um it's less of an aesthetic thing more of a more of a functionality thing but yeah you can do this to all the surfaces that you want until you're happy with how it looks or it serves the purposes that you need. Uh, that's gonna do it for this video. Let me leave you with a bit of encouragement. Game development is a huge, complex undertaking with so many parts to it. By watching videos like this and continuing to learn, you're doing exactly what you need to do. I'm still new to the level design side of game development, so I explained it in the way I wish it was explained to me. If you liked it or thought I went a little too deep, let me know so I know how to improve next time. As always, grace and peace, fam.